If you want to support the channel, you can use code TAILMON to get 5% off at Potan Store for your online codes, 10% off for your sealed product at Flipside Gaming, and 20% off for your superfoods at Amaranthi. Or if you're looking to buy singles or sleeves, you can fill up your cart and close the tab, then click on the affiliate link in the description and check out. That way you can support the channel over at TCG Player, Card Market, and Dragon Shield. This video is sponsored by the Pokemon TCG deck building website, PokemonCard.io. Hey everyone, thanks so much for tuning in quite late today, I know it's been a while. Sharted, thanks so much for being here and thank you, I really enjoyed uh, commentating. And Paul Sumbrian, thanks so much for being here. Uh, Brutissimo, thank you so much for resubscribing, that is so kind of you. Thank you so, so much for, um, for that, I really appreciate it, thank you so much. So, um, just gonna be playing in the ladder, just taking it chill. Um, thank you so much for all the support, Protissimo, on YouTube, on Twitch, everywhere. I notice <laughs> you're always there. Liam, thanks so much for the congrats on San Diego. Definitely very happy about, um, <clears throat> about that. Yeah, I felt like it had been so long since I last got a good uh, result at regional or international. Um, so yeah. Pretty happy and today i feel like this deck i don't know why this deck calls to me a little bit like i'm very interested in it i feel like it has more potential it's continually doing well in japan hasn't shown up at all here uh, not in this version at least uh we've seen we did see arcus get top eight at san diego but we really haven't seen this version of um of the deck now like i said this is a modified version from the um Japanese decks that have continually been doing well. Um, you try to establish threats with Arcus V Stars, Trinity Nova pairing up either Fly Chu or Tapu Goko to make comebacks with the Max Shock Paralysis. I feel like people are, are slacking once again in the uh, Paralysis counters, so that could be potentially good. And then you also have Temple of Sinnoh to deny special energies. You have Path to a Peak as well to try and deny abilities. Um, against an opponent and you have four marnie which is always always good uh Ditto v could potentially be good um but with a heavy path focus i know like pumpkaboo or lost vacuum to counter it that takes away a little bit of its use um but i could see that Ditto v being uh, interesting just really like the fact that both flying pikachu and tap goko have retreat that's also a big big bonus and rvd thank you so much <laughs> Thank you so much for the congrats. I'm glad you're enjoying um, you're enjoying my list. Uh, but anyways, let's jump into the ladder and have some fun chatting and whilst we play a little bit. So I haven't been super active lately with content creation. Um, all of you noticed and I've gotten a lot of uh, <laughs> messages as well or comments on my YouTube videos um, about my negativity. When, when creating content and like I take all feedback at heart and I want to make sure that I sit down and produce content when I really feel like it. And I think most of the negativity comes out of me when I'm doing things because I feel like I need to do them rather because I'm enjoying them. So today I felt like streaming and here I am. Yeah, and I might not stream again for the rest of the month. I might get into a streaming streak. I don't know. Yeah, but we'll see. We'll see how it advances. Um, Brennan, yeah, no problem. <laughs> no problem. Always happy to, to answer messages. I get a ton of messages, so it's impossible to answer everyone. But, uh, but I do try my best. All right. We have a pretty... Uh, I mean, I'm going to guess Eternatus, right? So it's going to be about Coco and Flychu here. I mean, Coco and Arceus. And we have a pretty good start as well. This is the interesting decision. I'm going to go with a double turbo despite there being some sort of risk uh, at the energy getting kind of waved. Um, the risk is very minimal. But if I attach the Lightning and then my opponent goes Marnie, Evolve into Weezing, and I don't have access to my ability, then that really complicates getting an attack of the turn afterwards. Now, that is also a complication, for sure. Absolutely a 
complication right there with the Temple of Zeno. I think that pretty much confirms Eternatives VMAX, I want to say. Uh, the Crobat definitely does. Um, so now we do need a Stadium counter, but this is all another thing that I think is pretty good. Like, my opponent, sure, they're shutting off my abilities, which means I can't use my attack on turn 2. But they're also not doing too, too much. And there's the dreaded Barney, uh, which could get us closer to a um, path to a peak. To turn off that stadium, we actually get a dead hand. So, <laughs> it is what it is. Marnie always doing its party trick against me. It happens. Right? It happens more often than one would like, but... Well, okay, so I do get a boss's orders. However, um, it doesn't really help me at all. I don't need abilities activated right now. And then I'll take 40 damage. Sure, I definitely want to attach all the energies. And then I can just knock out the leader, right? So, nothing too, too, too terrible. We also thrin the deck, thin the deck by three cards. I said thrin the deck. I was thinking of the three cards. Um, there's the first Eternatus being dropped. And I mean, the idea obviously behind this is to slow down your opponent enough to or your Eternatus just overwhelms. So it's not like we can just take it low forever but yeah and regardless my opponent's ability log actually did nothing because i had no pokemon to use an ability with six seven ten damage feels a little unnecessary i'm not sure what they're gonna be doing here so i'm also thinking going boss on the eternatus could be a good plan maybe just eliminating the, the wheezings it's the best idea here but not too sure so there's this fear point i also have the potential to retreat into tapu Koko. okay so now i definitely have a reason to play the boss and go after that eternity to set up that token ko i think that's going to be worth it and so it's definitely going to be the flight through and this friend and then we're gonna get an Arceus V-Star. No way for me to black out this friend. Well, no, my opponent does threaten the Eternatus next turn. I should go ahead and do this. And my hand also really sucks, so... Like, if this gives me abilities for two turns, then that's pretty good. And the uh, Path to Peak could potentially hurt my opponent quite a bit. So, definitely grabbing a Path to Peak limit my opponent and then so this is another conundrum for sure they'd love to power up something else love to guarantee the coco v max but if i do that then i'm not doing much else so i'm not gonna attach this energy just yet i'm just gonna take the ko attach one energy from my deck for thinning purposes onto the coco I attach and then I thinned, then that would be a little nonsensical. And Connor, <laughs> cool emotes right there from Five Wave, nice. All right, there's the Eternatus, immediately has the stadium counter, which is all right, not the end of the world. Uh, no more ordinary run for my opponent, that will be important to note. Definitely could have like them okay. with the path to peak, but they had the counter immediately. Um, then in, in my list, I missed the heavy ball. So, I mean, I didn't miss the heavy ball, I never had a heavy ball. It's rather, I wish I had a heavy ball, but honestly, I don't think I would do the deck. Um, like, I'm not sure what you could potentially take out. Maybe, big, maybe one energy, but that's about it. Maybe one energy. That's the only thing that I could conceivably come up with in order to... Um... This is an interesting decision. I think I'm still going to go with the Marty, but... Um, maybe one energy would be the cop for the heavy ball, but even that is questionable. Oof, this really isn't 
great. I mean, I hope my opponent doesn't have the immediate alternatives response. There's also the potential that my opponent just uh, misclicks as well. <laughs> that would be cool. Uh, no Coco VMAX for me though. This turn and no path to peak. I was hoping to get one or the other, but the preemptive attack on the turn just definitely pays off. I can't attack with Coco V, but my opponent poisons me. I can evolve out of it and then take another KO. I'm also getting two prizes here. No Arceus. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. Like, I wish the space. Like, if I really wanted to add the Hay Ball, maybe you could take out a Quick Ball. Maybe an Energy. I don't like either, though. Like, I generally do not like either option. But those would be the potential... The potential cuts from where the list is at. Um, with Crown Senate coming out, though, I do feel like the deck needs a few more adjustments. Ooh, this sucks. Still no energy. Flat patch. I mean, I do get the Goku VMAX to evolve, but now there's the threat of the incoming other alternatives. And if I had a backup Coco, then that's fine, but I clearly do not. Okay. So we're gonna go grab the Coco VMAX. If I go Escape Rope, what's my opponent even do here? I think it's just spin as much as possible. Ultra Ball for the other Coco V Max. Because I can't take one hit with the Coco V Max, but I won't be able to. I need Raihan, basically. I need either Raihan or I need to. I need my opponent to not KO me. And they do need a full, 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 full bench. They are done. Good amount of basics. There's knockouts. Have to peak, potentially useful, but not really. Oh, this sucks. <laughs> but to be fair, I've played very few supporters, right? And I've played one supporter this whole game. <laughs> and this is what, like turn four? Turn 10 for my opponent. And I went first. So I've played five turns. The first one I can't play a supporter, but in all the others, <laughs> I could have. And I've only played one. Well, I played two in boss, but I mean draw supporters. All right, hiding energy does not work for my opponent at the moment. There's the ultra wall, however. <laughs> there is the ultra wall. There's the evolution. Just attack. Please let me top deck something good. Oh. oh wait, what? Oh no, this is actually great. This is actually pretty okay. Right? Yeah. Zero card hand for my opponent. They really should have held on to that. I'm pretty sure they didn't realize that um, you needed to discard at least one card to draw with Serena? I do not know, but we could just win here. Uh, Steve Pitt, I wouldn't say Quick Ball has the same effect as Heavy Ball, because Heavy Ball, A, can fail, B, doesn't fetch you the Pokemon that you need when you need it. Um, and like, four Quick Balls is really really great in Amazing Rare Rayquaza because a lot of the time you're playing Ordinary Rod to recover a Rayquaza or a Raikou and then quick bowling back for it. Yeah, so I definitely don't think they are comparable. Um, I say that because for quick ball it's nice. Um, three would be the bare minimum but I, if you had to ask me I would drop an energy first and then the quick ball in, in order to add the heavy ball. But generally, like, there's a reason I didn't play Heavy Ball, you yeah. know? Um, and I don't think the deck can afford to cut anything. Honestly, the deck felt super, 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 super tight. To combat Path to the Peak, though, I did consider uh, trying out dropping the third Lightning and dropping the third Grass for two more training boards. That is something that I was thinking about. Yeah, Coco VMAX has one retreat cost. It's not free. All right, we'll get to the first. <clears throat> and another pretty good hand. Another pretty good hand. I really love the fact that um, 
everything has to retreat except the Arceus, right? And we're up against another copy. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, still gonna go with the double turbo. Um, dead hand. I think it's worth bidding. Well, no. Not quite. Never mind. I was gonna say bin the Coke, the Pikachu to establish the other Coco, but actually, I think discarding that. Or with the Ultra Wall, it's going to be way better. Otherwise, my Ultra Wall would be very heavy on the energy discard. Oh, what, wait, what? <laughs> okay. This is clearly not um, Eternatus. Now they've attached, so no attachment to Weezing either, to evolve into Weezing. But they do play the path. All right. <laughs> that works. Um, okay. So, I could retreat and then evolve. Does that seem worth it? I think it does. Just have the Coco ready to go. Alright. Yeah, I mean, so the training core thought was more for, um, for the purpose of... For the purpose of... Um, for the purpose of battling path to a peak because the Reggie matchup now is really difficult and you do not get access to uh, Radiant Greninja to thin through the deck and get more resources. And there's a lot of instances where having energy in your hand is also pretty key. So that's why uh, the training court was in the back of my in the back of my mind. You know? But um, but yeah, honestly, before Grand Senate, I don't think I would play the list any differently than, than I had. Uh, because, yeah, it doesn't help if you have a training court if you don't have energy to use Radiant Greninja, right? So then there's that as well. <laughs> um, I do like the fact that energy can sometimes just be like that resource to retreat. That can be huge. Um, obviously, Rayquaza is very energy intensive. Um, so, like, there's a lot of, like, minor tweaks you could consider making, but overall, it's, um, I don't know. You can only play around with it so much. And in the end, I think these changes are way too minor compared to just the raw consistency of the deck, right? Having access to Heavy Ball, like, could be impactful or it could not be, but you're going to win more games just based on the start of your deck, right? So that's why you don't want to cut consistency. Mm -hmm. Alright, so now we see another deck build. So we've seen Weezing our deck build and Flying Pikachu, so a land evil doll, so a lot of denial from my opponent. That damage is really not relevant. I have the one shot on the Flying Pikachu, and there's no basic energy, so there's no potential end response to this that I can see. So I think this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to go Serena. Discard the Quick Ball and the Arceus. Probably should have Quick Ball away the Arceus, grab something and then Serena them. That would have been better. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and retreat. Paying the double turbo. Then evolving. Her. And then I could play Temple of Sinnoh, because that does stop my opponent from doing stuff. And I'm not gonna use my V-Star. I haven't needed it, which is fantastic. <clears throat> right. Pretty, pretty good. So far, so good. This deck definitely feels like it needs like a bigger than 200 attacker. 200 damage attacker, though. So I would love to have choice spells here, but I don't think you can fit both. Because you need big parcel, I feel, against um, against Lost Box for the Fly Chew and against the as well. And there we have it. <laughs> pretty nice. Easy, easy wins. Hello, fancy dog. So, how do I feel about other Lost Box decks playing Capture Energy? Oh, I would love to play Capture Energy. Capture Energy is fantastic. And I was taking a look at the top four, top four list, um, like the the Rayquaza deck that made it past um, top eight. And I do like the inclusion. I do like the extra consistency that the basic energies offer overall, but Capture Energy is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And they did have the heavy ball, right? They just had the right with the inclusion. So, I don't know. A little bit of different different style. Um, in the end, the list is four cards different. So, it's not that big of a change. 
What do you think of Zorak Beastar after rotation? I think it's probably gonna get much, um, much better. However, it will not be dealing enough damage to KO the stage two EXs, so that could potentially be a problem for it. But I do think Zorak Beastar will be, um, will get much better once Lugia gets much worse once all the special energy rotate. I think that's gonna be a big determining factor and i could see it being very good but honestly like we don't know so we just got scarlet and violet so we basically have zero information on how those cards will impact the meta game and um we also don't know how um like what other cards will come out i'm pretty sure we're gonna have more scarlet and violet uh, sets combined into one big set over here in uh, the West. So I don't know what new cards are going to be released, right? We don't know what fighting EX Pokemon are going to be coming out. So I can't say today, like today on paper, sure, um, Hizuian Zorak looks great. But realistically, I don't know. You know, like there's so many unknown cards that we're going to get that it's impossible to say what's going to be good after rotation. Yeah, I know a lot of people like to um, focus on that and they want to get ready for rotation, but we still have potentially two more Japanese uh, Scarlet and Violet sets ready to go before we can even uh, talk about um, rotation. So I think that's a big, uh, a big deal. Okay, now this hand is super broken here. I'm going to go Starbirth. I'm going to go Grab Path to Peak. And Marty, I mean, I'm gonna play. No, I'm not gonna play the escape rope. I'm just gonna attack the Arceus. So I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna Marty. <clears throat> How do I? Yeah, your band friend. I hate having to deal with bots. And all right, now we retreat and we Trinity go on. Yep, and <laughs> uh, thank you, Steve. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I appreciate. It. Yeah, feel free to ask. Uh, feel free to ask any questions. Also, full disclaimer: I have not seen all the spoilers for the Scarlet and Violet set. I've seen some, but I have not seen all of them. Wow, I martyred my opponent directly into the stadium plus the V-Star. <laughs> um, and yeah, like Gudra V-Star, if the format slows down, if it slows down, if there's less 1KO potential, then Gudra V-Star could actually be really good, yeah. And that's the thing, like, whatever I say today could be complete yes <laughs> in in a few months time right because there's still so many new cards to come out so like i don't know my style is i don't worry about that until it's relevant for my next tournament so until i'm done with re playing regionals and euic is coming up that's probably when i'll start thinking about rotation and not beforehand but never say never <laughs> All right, definitely need the Coco. Don't think I'll be needing Colossus Orders. Really sucks that my fully powered Coco got right here. Uh, sure, the Marty. Um, well, I definitely like Rayquaza because that's the one I chose. Like, whenever I play a tournament, I'm choosing that deck because I feel like I can win the tournament with that deck. Therefore, that's my favorite, um, that's my favorite, um, deck choice, right? That would be my favorite Lost Fox variant, the Rayquaza version, because I did well with it, and I believe that it could take me the full way, and I feel like if I had played the top 8 matchup way, 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 way better, I probably would have won that. Okay, so my opponent 
really targeting down my dudes, but no draw on Max in sight. Take this opportunity to do this. It really sucks that they already set up the with the KO though. And let's go ahead and thin. And I still have path to a as well. So that's important. Grab the code though. Like if I if I still need to get past the draw done at some point. I'm not gonna Marty because now I know they do not have a thing, right? And they didn't play the torture either, so I'm not gonna help them. And Gyarados is unplayable, Gyarados EX. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> I feel like we're due for a good Gyarados. Like, there's always trends with decks, right? I feel like we're due, we're due for a good Gyarados. Alright, so this is game over, right? Like, why would you do this? I can just retreat. Like, what's the point of doing that? Just retreat. And then attack you and win. Alright. How are we undefeated with this? I'm not exactly sure. It's just solid, right? It's solid at setting up and solid at doing damage. So pretty happy. <laughs> pretty happy with that. Can't ask for much more than that. Hey Mello, thanks so much for being here. What are we having for dinner? I made myself a sandwich. I was gonna get some tacos, but I have so much food on my fridge that I need to finish. <laughs> By the way, shout out to Mellow Magic Harp for inviting me to the Lake of Rage podcast. I don't know when the episode will be coming out, but I'll definitely be sharing that when it does. We had a really nice chat. All right, so we're going second this time around. We have the double turbo to establish a threat off of Trinity Charge. However, we're up against Rich. So now it's finally time for our good friend, Blaichu. <laughs> yeah, don't transfer to life. If you're watching this and you're considering transferring your PCU account to life, don't do that. Abort that mission. All right. So Flychu will be pretty good. The fact that they're down two path to peaks is also good for the potential um, Temple of Sinnoh play later on. So that's cool. I feel like there's a high chance my Arceus survives. So I'm not going to discard an Arceus. And I'm just going to establish the Flychu here. And I'm not even going to bother playing the Mark just yet. I don't think there's any need. Notice how I'm not bothering to check any prices at all. Uh, this is like a very nice change of pace from playing Lost Box. This deck, like, I don't think I play a single of any card in this deck, actually. Uh, maybe the Escape Rope, but that's it. So, and that's not something I want to check for, obviously. Or like, I could, right? But everything else, you have more than two copies. Two copies, at least. So then I just assume I have whatever I need in the beginning. And then eventually I will try to take note, but... It's not that big a deal not to do it. Worry, bro. Alright. Sounds pretty good. I haven't had, like, a good burger in a while. So, I've been looking into Vancouver Big Joe. I really want to go. Obviously, I have good memories, fun memories of Vancouver. <laughs> Since I won a regional there. I also want to go to Knoxville, but well, flights are so ridiculously expensive lately. And I have a little bit of credit left over from one airline, but all right. So now we're talking. We got the energy. I think it's just going to the flight, right? Or maybe no. Actually, it probably isn't. Maybe it's. Establish a second flight you That way, if they go into the red eyes, I can just alternate between light juice. Hey, 
Um, I am definitely going to Orlando. That one I am 100% sure going. Just not, how am I dead going again? Jeez. Um, I am 100% going to Orlando. Yes, absolutely. Orlando, I am. I know, I know, like, I really want to go. It's just Knoxville is not an easy place to get to from Mexico. And, like, usually when tur for tournaments in the Midwest, what I do is I fly into Chicago, and then there's always people that are happy to, to drive, um, and, like, I hitch a ride, right? But it's eight hours. That's so long. That means I have to get a super early Chicago flight and then eight hours. That's brutal, honestly. That's brutal. So that's that's the issue. Um, yeah, Fresno is also expensive. Cardi B Max for Vancouver, probably not. <laughs> probably not. Um, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'll definitely a hundred percent sure I'll be in Orlando. That one I already have booked. I'm actually arriving early, um, a little bit early, to to go to the parks. Like I don't get to go to Orlando often, of course. So made an effort, saved a little bit of money, so I could go to the parks. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll see. I mean, Fresno is still so far, so so far out. Like what I. What I've been doing lately is like I only plan like one or two trips, right? So right now I have Orlando planned, and then I'm taking a week off um, from life <laughs> with my girlfriend. Uh, we're having a small vacation, and then afterwards I have to decide for Knoxville, Vancouver, and EUIC. Like those are the first three things in the back of my at the back of my mind currently. Okay, with this I might need to hide behind the flight chute to establish the. Arceus, I'm also not going to reveal the fact that I have an Arceus. Or my flight, you could just get trapped. <laughs> that also works. Alright. My flight, you is officially trapped. Here are people playing this or like in Lugia. I have no idea. Okay, so... Yeah, being trapped is actually a problem. Wow. Right, so I might as well. I mean, I do have to read that though. Oh uh, yeah, I guess I should have. I could have done that, right? I probably was a better play. I didn't think about that. I should have just attached to Arches Serena and been patient. Probably what I should have done. But now it's too late. All right, we're gonna Thunder Shock. <laughs> um, Knoxville isn't too far from Atlanta. Oh really? I didn't. So yeah, my also my U.S. geography is not very. Not very good. Um, how far away is Knoxville from Atlanta? Like, it's driving. Oh, Fresno is a two-hour drive? From LA? Oh, that's real. That's fine. Oh, three hours to Knoxville. Oh, I'm, then I'm definitely going to try and do that. That's going to be way cheaper, yeah. And I'm sure I'll be able to hitch a hike, hitch a ride. <laughs> from someone from Atlanta, right? Oh, that's way more doable. Thank you for letting me know. I wish people would make like more informative threads on like driving spots. That would be really helpful. Um, Nashville to Mexico. I don't think Nashville is very accessible either. For some reason, Charlotte is. Like there's a direct flight to Charlotte from Mexico City, but I don't think Nashville, at least not when I went to Worlds. Um, I have not looked into Nashville, but I will, I will. Oh, well, this hand. <laughs> Why is Marnie this brutal? Like, I feel like Marnie just has absolutely no mercy at all. You know, absolutely no mercy at all. Okay, well, thank you. <laughs> it's actually very kind. Okay, never mind. So, wow, what a tough pick. Okay, so with this, I'm just going to establish double turbo Marnie Pass. I think that seems reasonable. Right? So, Marnie Pass. Nope, I already have the path. Don't misplay, Pablo. Do not misplay. The likelihood that I get return KO'd is very, very small. So, let's do this. Let's play the path. The 20 damage actually ends up mattering. I don't know what they have. 
But I also needed brand new cards. Maybe I could have pulled wrist. Maybe that would have been better. But this seems alright. And I got the right hand too. That's pretty big. Because with the right hand, I actually get to if Flightchu somehow gets KO'd, I get to re immediately power up the Arches V Star and power up something on the bench. So that's pretty big. Fresno is a weird location. <laughs> Alright. I mean if I can get to Fresno like with a two-hour drive from LA, that's then I'm then I can confirm today that I'll be at Fresno. Because LAX LA is actually a pretty a pretty easy flight from here. Um okay, so my opponent didn't do anything at all, which is fantastic. Um now I might not even choose like I might not even bother powering up the Arceus. No, I should. So that I can play a seven price game. So I'll do this. And I get another KO. Very nice. <laughs> Wait, which which misplay taunt? The one which misplay did I over over? You know what? I really want to check the pull up top one. When's the dates for Knoxville? Knoxville is February 24 and 26. Because I also have a wedding on that day. So, like, if I don't get to go, oh my. Atlanta flights are so cheap. Well, not so cheap, but definitely cheap. Definitely very, very. Oh, wow. Well, who was it? Uh, looks like. Who told me about Atlanta? I can't find the message now. So it looks like Clam Burglar. <laughs> You're, you, you've officially made me go to Atlanta. Why would they leave? Okay, what is happening in this game? It's game over, right? I just attach here and it's absolutely game over. I knock out the Lugia, I'm down to one prize card. And then I just win the game, right? Whatever they do, like even if they set up, sure they knock out Flight True and then I just attack and win. Like maybe they counter Stadium Roxanne and I whiff an energy, that's the only way. <clears throat> five hour drive from indianapolis yeah not getting double turbo oh yeah yeah <laughs> yeah sometimes like that happens to me like i you you think so far ahead that you end up forgetting one or two <laughs> one or two steps along the way and that's what happened in the top eight a little bit like i was thinking of the sable i play um eventually and then i was thinking about keeping the psychic and forgetting that i needed psychic to do 400 damage it was, it was weird. Um, it's a great airport. Okay, I mean, this is really, really doable. Um, yeah. The direct flight is very expensive, but you know, I don't understand how. Flights with stops to want like I don't know. Flight prices are always super weird. Okay, so now we just go attach and GG. Easy win. We're just cruising with this deck, right? Have we lost a game? Have we actually lost a game yet with this deck? I don't think we have. No, we have not. <laughs> Alright. Okay, I'm gonna switch to Pico. So, I will be back, just, good, just so I know where to cut the video. Great back. 